morning everybody so this is like something I don't enjoy about my son being able to drive now oftentimes I get in any one of my couple vehicles and my seat is my seats like this I get in my car and my seat is like this because my son drove my car last night and didn't put the seat back where it belongs. What's up, Brandon? Good morning. I buy a house's hat on today. Um, yeah, so every time or a couple days a week now, I hop in my car and my seat is, I'm on top of the steering wheel. I can't even drive because my son got in, in my car the night before and drove it somewhere and didn't put the seat back. So it's one of the hidden downsides of your kid getting their license. But anyway, I wanted to... Um, share something with you t today that I think is really helpful and a lot of people get stuck in this perception of what they believe negotiations need to be and then we put up this sort of rough exterior to where we play these games with with buyers and sellers or whoever it is that we're trying to buy something from or if we're trying to sell somebody something we put up this sort of rough exterior to make the people feel like we're not really interested or oftentimes I see in real estate um, if someone is looking to, to, to buy a property they don't want to seem overly excited about their interest or um, they may rather than compliment the property or the condition that it's in or whatever they may criticize or point out what they think are, are deficiencies in the property when they prepare an offer because they're looking to get a discount and, and I completely understand you know during negotiations the need to try and win or oftentimes it's just a financial aspect of the transaction that the buyer or seller may need to get a few more thousand dollars um, to their side of the table well, what I wanted to share with you is how people typically respond emotionally to that type of interaction. So I've been on the, the both sides, right? I, I've I've been the seller of a property, and um, you know, someone will say something about the size, the location, um, you know, maybe the number of bedrooms. Um, not, you know, we're not really interested. They'll make an offer, and then for me, instantly, what I draw the conclusion is is that they're not serious. Uh, I mean. You know, if they're uh, not really, you know, motivated to, to, to close and, you know, they, they were kicking it around a little bit and all this good stuff and they think the house is too small, doesn't have enough bedrooms, like this is a 45 to 60 day agreement. If, if the buyer doesn't seem sincere or motivated or genuinely interested at the beginning of negotiations, a lot of sellers um, will turn their nose up at the offer and not even want to engage in real negotiations. They won't take your offer seriously. Um, and then the other thing it does is a lot of times it, it can be taken... Uh, people will take offense to it. It's, it's their property. You may be looking at it and comparing it to a dozen different homes that you had looked at, but this is the seller's home. It's their personal property. They have an emotional attachment to that home. So any um, negative uh, feedback, if you're looking to buy it and you genuinely want to get a good deal, um, could really put that person in a defensive position. So rather than saying, well, it's a little on the small side, I think it's overpriced, um, you know, we wish it had more updates, like at the end of the day, that's not going to change their perception of what they're 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 willing to sell for. What you're likely to be able to get from them is if you can get them to emotionally engage or connect with you and your offer and your agent and your transaction, they're going to be more willing to want to help. So rather than saying it's too small, it doesn't have enough bedrooms, the condition's not quite what they were looking for, but we'll go ahead and make an offer. Does it make sense, right? If all those things are, are, are the case, why are you making an offer? It's confusing. And I know that we typically do that to try and influence them to consider those, those logical reasons we gave them about why our offer is lower. But what happens is they emotionally respond to it. They get defensive. Um, they feel personally um, you know, criticized or attacked. So rather than that, what it may sound like is, hey, my clients, or we really enjoyed the property. Um, it's very cute. Cute is another way of saying small. So in real estate lingo, cute as a button translates to small. 
It's a very cute property. We think that may just work for this young family or, or whatever, growing for whatever it is. Um, we've prepared an offer. You know what? Um, don't be shocked when you see it. Uh, we put together what we thought was a fair offer. Um, we're really excited about being able to work something out and we look forward to hearing from you soon. There is absolutely no benefit in being a tough negotiator. Now, standing your ground, being firm is, is one thing, but um, being borderline uh, rude or critical of either part of that party is, is not going to put that person in a position to where they're willing to want to help you. I've often said before, when people come across as, as brash or, or overly aggressive in negotiations, it puts the other person on the defensive. And whether it's the buyer or the seller or whatever, good deals take place. Big discounts, you know, favorable terms, all of that stuff happens when, when the seller of the property feels comfortable <clears throat> that they're making a good decision. And oftentimes that is in direct correlation about how they feel about you. And then they'll judge your offer. So if you're rough and rude and brash and critical when you make an offer, they're gonna respond to the emotional side of that, that they feel that you're being rude or critical or not being fair before they ever start to process whether or not the financial part of your offer is fair. So when you're negotiating with people, be more complimentary. Be nicer, and you'll find that people are much more willing to want to open dialogue with you and be willing to give you a discount, right? That's the old saying, like you, you catch more bees with honey than you do with vinegar. It doesn't, it doesn't change when you apply it to sales. Start being nicer to your clients. And, and I know, you know, listen, for most salespeople, we're very polite, we're very, now, but now we're talking about being on two separate sides of the negotiations, right? You have um, one person on this side of the table, one person on this side of the table. A lot of times that becomes <clears throat> almost an argument, right? And then people are more concerned about being right than they are about winning. And oftentimes, that's what happens with negotiations when we're when we're critiquing, being critical, um, when we're using um, negative, um, you know, aspects of of, of whatever the, the 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 transaction is to try and influence or bully or convince people to do what we want them to do. The reality is, is, as salespeople, we are kidding ourselves if we think that we can actually convince somebody to do something. It's definitely not the case. All we're able to do is guide them through, and what we should be doing is guiding them through making a decision. So someone's gonna be more willing to allow you to guide them through a decision if they feel like you have their best interest in mind, or if you're genuinely a nice person that 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 is um, relatively easy to work with. Not if you're being um, critical and, and, and constantly pointing out the negatives of every situation. So, Bring more compliments to the table, less criticism, and you'll find that negotiations go farther and smoother if you handle it that way. Hope everybody has a great Friday, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.